What's up guys and welcome to the third installment of the filament series. My name is Anthony Tackett. If you're not familiar with what the filament series is, this is something I'm doing in partnership with Joe Mike Terranella. Uh, he has another channel that's all about 3D printing and Joe and I are doing this series together and it's really a different type of filament review for you guys. Essentially, we just want to know what are some of those gotchas with uh, particular brands or particular types of filament. We're printing three different models. Uh, I'll dive into that with the first plastic. This week we're reviewing Make Shaper. I have a PETG, an ABS, and a PLA. So let's get right into it with the PETG. The first model we're printing is a temperature calibration tower. And the way you set that up in your slicer is you get a particular temperature range that you want to try and print through. And you start with the hottest temperature on the bottom and incrementally decrease it to the lowest point that you want to test up here on top. And what I've done, this plastic, according to Make Shaper's recommendation, is printed best at 200 to 240 degrees C. So what I've done is I've started at 240, and I've used my slicer. We're both using Simplify 3D for this series. And I've incrementally decreased that temperature, I think two degrees at a time. Okay, and as you can see, I've highlighted 228 or right around that area. And that's my recommendation for you guys for this plastic is right around 228, 230 degrees Celsius. So that's right in the middle. And I found that it looks pretty nice overall, you know, across the range of temperatures. Uh, the bridging, there's a small bridge in between each number, looks pretty nice across the board. The numbers look pretty nice across the board, they could be worse. But right there in the middle, I found that was a pretty good balance of strength and overall print quality and aesthetic. So knowing that, I took that temperature, I was printing at 50C on the bed with a little bit of glue stick, and I printed this model. This is a calibration test for your printer, but it's a really nice model to test things like bridging, how well does it handle small details. This is a, called a spire, I believe, like really small vertical prints, overhangs you can see here on the side, a hole in the sidewall, bridging again. Th this is just a really nice test for you to perform. When you purchase a plastic, it'll tell you how well it bridges. In this case, PETG, more specifically, this make shape or PETG, seemed to bridge fairly well. There's a little bit of drooping, as you might be able to see there on camera on the lower layers, but overall, that's, that's really not that bad. The surface quality is pretty nice on this dome. These little overhangs printed pretty well. All in all, I'm happy with this plastic, but I did notice a few things. There is a not, not a lot, but there is a little bit of stringing that's happening. You can kind of see a string flying off in between this pyramid and this tower. There is some stringing inside the bridge test. And so what I would recommend for you guys is to pay attention to your retraction settings. Now, I'm not going to give you those exact settings because that's going to vary from printer to printer. If you have a Bowden machine versus a direct drive printer, your retraction settings are gonna be different. In our instance, I'm using a Bowden style setup on my machine, Joe has a direct drive. And so our retraction settings are almost always gonna look a little bit different, but that's something you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to with this PETG. The last PETG I tested wasn't this stringy. So make sure you pay attention to that. And the third model that I printed to showcase the plastic and really the characteristics of PETG in general was this little tripod mount for a phone. This came out just beautiful. I adjusted the retraction settings. This was printed at a 0.2 layer height. And basically your phone slips in here and you can tighten this like a clamp down onto your phone and there's a quarter 20 nut that slips into the slot in the back and that'll thread right onto a tripod and give yourself a nice tripod mount for your phone. PETG in my opinion is kind of like a nice marriage between ABS and PLA. You can get really nice quality out of a PETG print but it also has the temperature resistance, the flexibility, and the overall strength that you would find in an ABS. Uh, I really enjoy printing with PETG, and this part will be extremely useful for me. The next plastic that I printed was the Make Shaper ABS. As you saw, the PETG was a nice kind of lemony yellow color. This is kind of a creamy orange color, and again, the first test 
was this temp tower. Makeshaper recommends that you print this particular ABS at 210 to 245 on the hot end. So that's exactly how I incremented the temperature. I started at 245 and went down to 210, just like I did with the PETG. And I was absolutely shocked to find that I really liked the way this looked right around 210 which is an extremely low temperature for an ABS. But that's right around the, you know, the 10. There was very little drooping. The bridge looked really nice. And I'm not even printing in an enclosure, guys. I have the fortune of being in a shop that doesn't really have a draft, so that helps. But if you're not that fortunate, then you're gonna look at maybe enclosing the printer or at least putting up some walls to block the draft that might be in a room. But anyway, 210, I was printing this at 80C on the bed. Just like the PETG, I was right around 50 millimeters per second with glue. Again, something else that you might wanna watch out for with ABS is your cooling. And I did not have my cooling fan and turned on at all. Of course, my next model was this calibration test. And I think that this ABS maybe bridged a little bit better than the PETG did, which was a huge shock to me. The hole in the sidewall here turned out well. I mean, honestly, this is one of the better ABS prints that I've ever been able to do on this machine that I'm using now. The overhangs here, again, look really nice. Printing at 50 millimeters per second. That tower, really nice pyramid just across the board this is not a bad abs print so with that in mind i have my retraction settings adjusted from the previous plastic which was that petg i decided i wanted to print something useful so my third model is a functional piece and this is a center finding jig for woodworking i wanted to really take advantage of the characteristics of abs nice durable plastic temperature resistance. I found this orange color to be really nice and it will not get lost in my shop, which is great. And the way this works is you take something that's cylindrical, like this glue bottle or ideally a dowel rod or something, and you put that over the end and you scribe a line right there. And you do that in a few places. And what that does is it helps you find the center of that cylinder so you know where to drill. So it's a really handy little jig to keep around a workshop. One thing you will notice though, is I do have a little bit of curling and that is characteristic of ABS. Here, I have a little bit of a lift. It's not gonna affect the functional qualities of this jig, but because of that result, I absolutely recommend that you print this plastic in an enclosure or up your bed temp. I was printing at 80C on my bed. I still got a little bit of warping on this larger flat piece. So pay attention to that when you're printing with this plastic. The last plastic that I printed was the Makeshape or PLA. This was a little bit darker of an orange, but I was excited because PLA usually performs pretty well for me. So let's take a look at those models. Temp Tower. Makeshaper recommends that you print this particular PLA at 190 to 215 degrees C. I printed on a 50 degree bed and just like the other models, I started at 215, which is the hottest in that range that they provide and went down to 190. And I found based on the print quality that right around 195 was my preference. And that's gonna be up here closer to the top. That's around this nine or 10. Again, you probably saw a second ago that I had those numbers up on the screen. And overall, that just seemed to be the cleanest part of the print. It seems to be fairly strong and I was comfortable moving forward at 195. So here is the calibration test and it's no surprise that it came out pretty nice. The bridging here is nice. I would say that the ABS was on par with this. I don't think this is at fault of the PLA at all. I think that was just an exceptionally nice ABS print. The sidewall here was okay. It wasn't great. A little bit of stringing, but not too bad. These thin walls came out all right. The smaller details were just fine. This tower or spire, I guess, came out well. So I felt pretty confident to go ahead and move to a nicer, more decorative model with this PLA at 195C. So I found this sweet Batman. This is a Batfleck cowl from the Batman v Superman Justice League line of movies. 
and man, I am happy with this. I scaled it down to about 30%. There are some defects in this print right here on both cheeks and also on the inside of the ears. And I think that's because I scaled it down so much. Again, this was at 30%. It's supposed to be life size. And all in all, it's really not that bad in my opinion. I started the print off like this to maximize the detail on the face. And that's a tip for you guys too, is just to pay attention to your orientation when you're printing something. If I had printed this way, I would have had to deal with support material here under his nose, under his chin, maybe even up in the eye sockets. And that could have just been a mess to remove. I think I might experiment with some concrete spray paint or something to give this a nice flat look. But all in all, really happy with this PLA, really happy with this model. So that's it guys, another quick episode in the filament series. Again, this is Make Shape or Plastic. I would definitely recommend it for you guys. It seems to be a fairly affordable plastic as well. Definitely competitive in that, in that area. And if you pay attention to your settings, I can't give you exact settings because your machine is gonna be different from mine. I'm using a genuine E3D V6 hot end as is Joe. You might have a different hot end. You might have a Bowden machine versus a direct drive machine. There are so many little nuances to each machine that I can't just give you exact settings, but the main thing to watch out for with at least these plastics is probably retraction and maybe your extrusion multiplier. I did have to up that a little bit for the PETG and then drop it back down some for the ABS and PLA. It was extruding a little bit much. One thing to note, I was able to get up to 60 millimeters per second. This Batman cowl was at 60. And that's another interesting thing I've noticed about Simplify 3D. When I tried to print faster with Cura, for some reason, I was not getting these types of results. Uh, it just got kind of cruddy looking really fast. And so I usually didn't go above 40 millimeters per second. At 60, I'm really shocked that that piece came out well. So I will probably be paying a little bit more attention to speed in future videos also. Again, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you wanna stay up to date on this series or if you're interested in the other types of material I put out as well, like woodworking, everyday carry, things like that, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. The next episode of this series will be over on Joe's channel. You'll have all the links you need in the description for that, but look out at his channel. Go ahead and subscribe. That way you catch episode four of this series. Anyways, take care, enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you next time.